Right guys, this video is part of the Hexbeam series of videos which I'm currently making. Um, so this is for a field portable Hexbeam um, that if you've been following the channel um, that you'll have seen. And what I try to do on my channel in general is to show you things that I've not seen um, either online or in videos myself. Um, and hopefully it'll help, let help you, you guys fill in, fill in the gaps. So one of the sub-assemblies on the hex beam is you need a rope supports um, um, because obviously you're, you're basically building a structure on the hex beam and you know to basically this big structure to support your uh, elements, your wires, it's a two element beam. So initially setting up the hex beam I was using this because it was cheap stuff and eventually this is what I've made it into, this is basically the final length, the final um, rope support and you need 12 of these. Before before we get to these I just want to talk a little bit about a theory, um, what we're actually talking about here. So I'm just going to draw very poorly a hex beam here. So this is our centre post. Um, our base plate and our um, our stub mass, but on my one, this is all one piece. Now, coming off this, we've actually got um, our our arms, which end up going like this. Obviously, you have six of these. Now, in order to pull the uh, support up, um, we need a uh, some sort of support rope which runs across like this. So, down in the description, there's a list of the bill of materials. For everything that I've used and, and I'm updating this as I go so please keep checking it. The link should stay the same uh, on my Google Drive. There's actually a folder so if you click on that folder all the files are, are in there. So the length of this rope support is going to be determined by the length of um, your, your your spreader arm. Now I'm building a, a five band version so um, this would be 20 and um, roughly 17, 15, 12 and 10 and then you may have an option for 6 but I don't have 6 but I could add it so this is your your wire elements like so sorry sorry for the, the poor drawing there these are meant to be straight so you want to try and keep your wires as horizontal as possible now I've seen on some commercial hex beams that this is basically the, the rope support is almost up like this and the, the, the curve of the the spreader arms as well but it doesn't really matter but um, it's something that you need to put together so I can't give you a definitive size I can give you sizes as per my hex beam but depending on how you're actually building this there's a little bit of suck it and see but obviously there is a direct correlation between the length of the spreader arm and the the, the length of the rope now but that's, since that's the theory out of the way, um, we'll start looking at our, our, our ropes themselves. Now you need 12 of these. Now this is the finished article. Um, this is made from Mastrant P 2mm. Now this has got a, a breaking strength of 220 pounds. I think that's about 90 kilos. Never going to get, never going to get to that. So this is more than than ample for what I need. And um, so when I was setting up the hex beam initially, didn't know what to do. I bought a reel of this, this Webtex. This is very uh, inexpensive. And um, I think this was about eight, nine pounds delivered. And the purpose was to use this, and then you could use this going forward. You know, this would actually be okay, but you can see the difference. It's a lot thicker, and it's not as UV resistant. But one thing I would say is, you need to make sure that. Do as I say, not as I do. I would wear a pair of gloves. So it's always nice to use a, a heat gun or a heat source to basically, or a lighter to basically just smooth off the ends because otherwise they'll start fraying. And um, so the Webtex, this is good, good cost-effective option, but really the cost of this Master P really isn't um, much more. So there's really not a lot to it. Um, we have the rope. Um, we have these are S hooks. Now these. I buy it on Amazon. These are um, just stainless steel. You get um, bigger diameter ones, but these are absolutely ample. Again, a link down in the description for these. So before I actually use them, first thing I do is I actually take a pair of pliers and I close one end off like that. Okay. So this is where we're going to connect our rope. And the sizes that you see in the bill of materials, this is actually from the, set, the inside of the S-hook to the inside of the S-hook on the other end. 
like you can see here. Now, I'll just quickly show you me connecting this up. So, here is an aluminium ferrule that I've, I've purchased. These were, again, Amazon, really, really cheap. I think these were for 2mm themselves. So, again, put the, uh, put the rope through. Like so. Feed it back through. And I had mine quite close up here, like that. Now, I don't think this is the exact crimper, but it's more than good enough uh, for this, and I give it a double crimp, like so. And it kind of sticks in it, but I'll get it, we'll get it out. And I flip it over, and I just give it another crimp on the other side. Like that. So that's our S-hook connected to our rope. You could tie it in a knot, that would be absolutely fine. Again, it's up to you, but I've tried to, to, to break these, pull these apart, and let me tell you, you ain't going to do that. Finishing touches, well, what I'll do is I'm going to cut this off. So whenever I cut this, because this is a very strong rope, I actually prefer using side cutters, and then I get my blow torch, which is actually my soldering iron, and smooth off the ends. Do the same here, so it doesn't fray, like so. Now I put a little bit of heat shrink over here and the purpose of that was I didn't want this coming up like so and coming off. Now with putting on that heat shrink that is never going to come off. This is just like 10 millimeter glue line heat shrink and it was actually able to fit right over the top. The yellow stuff that you see here, well I've actually got two sets of these. Um, they will be fixed to the arms all the time once I get them on but this is just for my benefit to know that um, which which are the ropes that go from the inside and which are the ropes that go all the way around the outside um, actually should show you that it will bring back our our drawing here so off to the side here if we've got our X beam in the middle and we've got one two three four five six we can get our we've got one two three four five, six, but you also have them in the middle as well, so they would, like this, two, three, four, five, oh, six. So that's our 12 ropes that we need, and this is why we need 12, and the good thing about the hex is, because it's symmetrical, they're all um, exactly the same length. And talking of length again, length of these and consistency is absolutely critical. I would say try and get these within quarter of an inch, um, total spread um, because what happens if you don't your hex beam will be a little bit saggy and kind of the final point I was touching on there was use glue lined heat shrink just to identify these so one set is the inners um, for the outside to in and one set is going around the circumference but you don't really need to do that um, so again I've got 12 of these made up um, yeah that's, that's, that's about it really there's not a lot to it um, but it's quite a nice way, professional way, of actually making up your, your rope supports. Um, just be careful when you're using either your blowtorch, probably best to use a heat gun. Because what I normally do is I normally trim it off. And I just touch this in no more. Because what I don't want to do is put any heat on this and burn this. Um, Again, bit of heat shrink over the top and jobs are good in. Okay guys, I hope that was of some use. I know I've still got, still got some more hex beam videos to make, but hopefully we'll get them made in the coming weeks. Bye for now guys, 73.